I love to see the towns passing by and the ride is real beneath God's blue sky. Let me travel this land from the mountains to the sea, cause that's the life I bring. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, say God called home your rambling man. Welcome to Ramblin' Man Podcast, episode number 181. This one's with Charlie Pogue. And Charlie, I apologize. I meant to ask how you pronounce your name, but I totally blanked. Uh, But yeah, this is with Charlie Pogue, and we kind of talk about art. He's had an interesting journey to it, and it seems like he's kind of ramping up and trying to get out there more. And it was good to talk to somebody that is kind of coming from that viewpoint. If you'd like to follow him online, he's got an Instagram page, like underscore the underscore void or you can follow him on facebook at charlie pogue art charlie with an ie pogue p-o-g-u-e yeah thanks to charlie for coming on sponsor this week is feral john feral john is a graphic design illustration and social media consultation company based here in knoxville tennessee though they do work for clients big and small all over the country all over the globe in fact but they also do photography, videography, video editing, and audio editing, website design, SEO, writing, content development. Hell, they'll babysit your kids if it nets them money. So make sure you give them a follow on social media on either Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn at, at Feral Giant. And be sure to give them an email today and hire them for your next project. Without much further ado, here's the episode. Uh, are you originally from the South? I am. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, yep. you are from uh-huh. Knoxville. Okay, yep, yep. so the next question is, what high school did you go to? Uh, I went to Loudoun High School. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So my uh, my mom and dad uh, inherited a house when my grandmother died. Okay. We moved from Knoxville when I was like seven out to Loudoun. Okay. Uh, lived there through high school and yeah. then bounced around a little bit after that. Okay. Yep. Uh, if you don't mind my asking, how old are you? I am 36. 36? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you've seen a lot of the change. In oh, the, yeah. Uh, even yeah. in the last 10 years. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. And, and my parents are both very, like, politically active people. Okay. You know, they're both uh, Democrats. Okay. And, so, and my mom, especially, has always been super yeah. charged up as far as that goes. So. so, Loudon, I hate to tell a story, but when we, I went to Fulton, there's a, drinking game for this how long it takes me to bring up that i went to fulton but i remember we played loudon and substate at our park and every kid that got off that bus was six <laughs> three to six five yep. weighed 240 pounds yep. had no neck oh yeah four arms were as big as my yeah thighs. dude I, I was probably the smallest person in my school <laughs> they, they beat, <laughs> we were great we lost like four games the entire season they beat the shit out of us. Wait, wait, oh, how old are you? I uh, I will turn 46 in a couple okay, weeks. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah. this was not, this would have been 94, 95. This is before your time. Oh, sweet, But sweet. it's just hilarious that they all looked exactly the same. Yeah, I, like, I always remember Fulton just destroying us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, my freshman year in football, we were 0-8 freshman football and 1-9 varsity. <laughs> and then somehow <laughs> in the 2000s, they started being good. Yeah, no, no, Fulton, I feel like, didn't they win a state championship like not long ago? I think they won. They've won like six. Mm. Like it's nuts. Yeah, that's wild. It's crazy. And my ass, it's like, man, we were lucky to. Our last game we played against Farragut, we had twelve members on our football team. Farragut uh-huh. had like seventy, <laughs> and it like their entire sideline was full, and we had one guy Curly. He was on the sideline. So how how big is Fulton? Is it like a four A or? I think it it's got a bigger school, up. Right? We were. Th- 3A, because I think it's different in, like, basketball and baseball. Okay. But football, we were always 3A. I think we got bumped to 4A. It was weird, though. Yeah, yeah. Loudman was, like, a 2 or a 1, I believe. We we were, 
I think on the lower end of 3A, like my graduating class was like 103 to 105 people. Oh, wow. But then the freshman class my senior year was like 1,200 kids. Oh, my gosh. Like all of a sudden, for some reason, after us. Huge influx. Yeah. Yeah. And it was all just people in the neighborhood finally having kids, I think. Interesting. Like it was very weird. It was. So we got bumped up, I think, to like 4A. And started playing schools. I was like, we should not be playing the schools. <laughs> like, we, even when we played halls, and like, we played them freshman football, not varsity, because varsity, it was like, hell no. Right. Halls is massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these, these schools have huge budgets and yeah, stuff, you know, yeah. like for that we, stuff. Like, we did not. <laughs> no, yeah, Loudon did not either. <laughs> we were still rocking some helmets from like the 80s. Yeah. Man. It, it was insane. Yeah, I was in the marching band, and I feel like they had to like make exceptions for us because we were like almost like, I think, too small. Yeah. You know, that like there was like no one to, com- they had to like bump us up. There was no one to compete against or something, Damn. you know, like. <laughs> yeah, there were some schools that were like should have been one A that I think they bumped up to two A just because it's like They're we don't like, have anybody to yeah, play them. Like, yeah, right. It was nuts. <laughs> but that's what I think about when I think of Loudon is all those big guys with no necks. Just no, were, dude, like, that's 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 like run. incredibly accurate. They're all you know like uh, corn fed, corn raised, yeah. like good old oh, boys. God. Yep. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It was a good place to grow up. I'm glad yeah. I have nothing to do with it now. Really, I mean, it's a dead end place. You know, it just is. Uh, it's it's got yeah. some beautiful parts, but yeah. it's a lot of factories. The air quality is not good. You know, just kind of and a lot of chains. Yeah, yeah. Like there wouldn't have been nothing for me to do. Yeah. Um I was talking about there was somebody. With, God damn it! I will talk about you. There was somebody. I, uh, just because I mentioned this today, there was somebody we played. Wartburg or somebody like that. Wartburg. They were happy that they got a Hardee's and a Dollar General. Oh, bless their hearts. And across from the school, we were playing a tournament out there for three days. Like, we got to eat something other than Hardee's, <laughs> man. What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> like, we're going to feel like crap. <laughs> like, like, we're going to get wore out. Oh. Like, it was wild. Uh, so, yeah, some of those, they're beautiful. Like, I think I've, the only one and only time I played golf was at some course out in Loudoun. In Loudoun? Yeah. And it was great. It was some ritzy, uh, the fancy houses on the course. Oh, yeah. That we hit. It was six in the morning and we knocked the shit out. Oh, damn. It was like unintentionally, we were just bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my buddies were drinking beer at 5 30. Nice. We, I was not. I was like, hell no. I, I'm not good at this anyway. I don't need impairments, <laughs> man. Do you, do you still play? Nope. No, that's that's the one sport I've never been able to. I like the driving range. The driving range is fun. I tell you, it's a little pricey, but Top Golf, Top Golf is a lot of fun. I tried it. Did, did you? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Well, we I got to go there for work, so I didn't have to pay. And we were playing the games. Yeah, and yeah. I thought the games were a lot of fun. No, it was fun. Like to me, golf is like an impossible game. You know, it's like I'm trying to hit a ball into a hole I can't even see. You yeah. know, like way far away. So. Well, even when you can't see it, that's when even it gets when you, even exactly. harder. <laughs> even if I could see it, it's still tiny, you know? Like, Hillbilly golf. That's for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah where you yeah. can bounce it putt, off of the... Putt-putt? Yeah, putt-putt. Putt-putt's cool. <laughs> I do like putt-putt. Where you can bounce it off of the windmill. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's more my... Story. No doubt, no doubt. Okay, so Loudon, uh, what did your folks do for a living? So, um, my dad, he his, like real day job was typically he was working as like a cook or uh he actually managed mckay's bookstore oh yeah um the electronic side for years and years when i was growing up um but they are both actually artists themselves Um, okay yeah my mom does a lot of screen printing um photography she did some drawing and painting uh she really like helped push my dad's artwork a lot and helped uh marketing him and stuff my dad was a painter or is a painter yeah. i should say he still paints he lives close to here was he at the mckay's at the old location he was at the old yeah the, the real old location too oh was there one there, there was one before it was on even kingston pike really that was just like a hallway yeah that's Holy the God. first time the first one it wasn't there long before they moved i okay. don't think but i remember that one in bearden that was in like an old sizzler or something that it, it was in some yeah. older, or maybe it was, it, I just remember it had like a drive through almost, you know, an overhang thing where the front door was. Yeah. When you went in, you went up beside, but when yep. you went back, yep, you yep. had to go through. Yeah, yeah. It was over there by like where Toddy's is. Yeah. Like literally yeah. right next to Toddy's. Uh, See all those books on the lower shelf there and some on the top. Yeah. All those came from McKay's. All McKay's, yeah. yeah. Because that's back when you could go and get these big graphic designer yeah, topography. Nice book collection. Oh, thank you. 
graphic designer topography books for like three dollars yeah dude like it was nuts no yeah mckay's used to be it's still cool but it used to be really cool i think i yeah. like i like that old location yeah because now it's, it's like a cramped. warehouse yeah but, it i mean it's it's still it's still a yeah. good resource um Okay, so they worked there, and they were both artists. So, uh -huh. do you have any siblings? I have one sibling, uh, okay. my brother Oliver. Uh, he he works at Landing House. He's also an artist. Mm. He's a year older than me. Okay, yeah, we're Irish twins. So <laughs> <laughs> that may be a first on the podcast. Said we're Irish twins. <laughs> yep, we're Irish. Holy twins. Holy hell, that's awesome. <laughs> so, th so when you were young, like, did they really? I assume they really just fostered, oh, yeah. or did they say? Try a lot of things, see what works for you. Um, absolutely, man. Okay. Yeah, my parents are super open minded, and uh, they they really instilled um, a lot of like values in us, especially like creatively, you know, and like like what's important in life, you know, like money was never like become a businessman, or you know, like they right. they had they put paper, pencils, crayons in front of us like as early as I can remember. Okay, um, yeah. So they've they've always been big proponents of art and uh were you into comics or cartoons as a kid a little bit you know i i got into like batman and stuff a little bit loved like ninja turtles um all those like you know came up in the nickelodeon era yeah. you know in the 90s and stuff so yeah was definitely into that kind of stuff i was always way too old but i, I was watching doug and clarissa well, explain yeah. and rugrats just because I was like, this is so radically different yeah. I mean, than in, everything I was watching. <laughs> yeah, if I was your age, I'm sure I would have been too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, well, it was that, and I always felt old, because I felt like I was in like middle school or something when all that came on. I was like, it was that and like Beavis and Butthead. Yep. And uh, Ren and Stimpy. Yep, yep. That yeah, was yeah. the other one. Yeah, I remember watching uh, Beavis and Butthead at a super young age. That, that we did eventually get cut off from that. I don't know what it was that finally, like, that and Tales from the Crypt. Oh, you remember God. that that show? Yeah. That yeah. show scared the hell. Yeah, out of I had me. no business watching that as no. a kid, but but we did, and that was just the nineties. <laughs> well, that my parents let me watch comedy and violence. Like I would watch comedy specials when I was a kid, hearing the C bomb being dropped, and be like, "What's that, mom?" Oh, nope, yeah. nope, nope, nope. You're not saying that word. <laughs> yeah. Or violence, like watching. Beverly Hills Cop, and it's like, oh, they're walking into a strip joint. Turn your head. Turn your head. <laughs> Can't look at boobs. You can see him shoot the shit out of yeah. somebody, but you can't look at boobs. Yeah, it was interesting to see where parents like drew the line yeah. in the 90s, you know. It seemed like yeah, <laughs> no oh, yeah. rhyme or reason to it almost. It's like Oh, uh, I think I hit a certain point. I was trying to figure out what was the first R-rated film I saw in the theater. And it may have been Speed. Speed. I think I think Speed's rated R. What year was that? 94, 94 95. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking back. I was like Speed. There were there was a handful of those. Yeah, like, I know. I saw those in. The I still theater. don't think I've seen Speed, but I remember when it came out. Actually, it's a trip. It's yeah. it's. This is a discussion that my friends and I have all the time now. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that movies, a lot of movies, are not getting released in the theater. Like right. I would you you feel a lot different when you're in the theater watching the film. Right. And Speed was definitely one. When you're in a theater full of people just going nuts. Oh, absolutely. Dumb fun it is. Yeah, the big production. Yeah. And like, yeah. We were talking about Top Gun Maverick and I was telling my buddy, I was like, you like it this much. This is going to be great for an audio podcast. You like it this much, but if you just watch it on your couch, you probably liked it that <laughs> half as much. Yeah. Because it's like, no, you're not there with the crowd and everybody going. Right. It's kind of like a ritual, you yeah. know, like it's, yeah. it's supposed to like envelop you in a way. Yeah. It's you know? weird. That's, I've started, I log every, I'm a movie nerd. If you can't tell. I am too. <laughs> I am. A, I'm a bit of one. Of, yeah. So when I log stuff on Letterboxd, I will make a comment and say, I feel like this would be half a star or a star higher uh, if, nice. I, if I'd seen it in the theater with a group of people. Uh -huh. I just watched that Wolves with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Okay. Is that new? Yeah. Just came out in Apple. They were supposed to release it in theater for a week and they pulled it at the last minute. I was like, this is not a bad movie, but if I'd seen this in a theater... I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. Totally, totally. With people there. Yeah, right? yeah, no, I, I get that, man. Uh, you know, I, I agree with like what Martin Scorsese said, where he was like saying movies now they're more like like uh, theme rides. Yeah. Or you know, it's like an amusement park now, where it's like this whole it's more than just watching a movie, and so yeah. they actually design movies like that. You yeah. Know? 
But it's um, wild. Like, imagine seeing like Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, I did see that in theaters. Well, no, but I mean, imagine seeing it like on your TV. Oh, yeah, or yeah. Something at first where you don't get to see how big that. Absolutely, no, abs- absolutely, absolutely. That's a great example. It's nuts. for sure. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies of the uh, oh, 2010s. My God, that movie, definitely. We went. I went with two guys, and we were, we walked out just like. We will go back in and see it again. <laughs> like, we Dude, it's dying, awesome. Man. For real. We were like, this is, did you see Furiosa? I have not. I was going to ask you. It was good. It was, was it? A, I think it fell under the, the struggle I have with movies now is I feel like a lot of them are like 20 minutes too long. Yeah. I, like, I know. I agree. I was like, man, you could cut 20 minutes out of that and it would be great. Yeah. Furiosa. A lot of fluff. Hey, yeah. Yeah. The, like, I love the Mission Impossible films. And the last one, I was like, there was too much talking. Right. And not enough him try, almost killing himself. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There was a little too much talking in yeah. this for me. Yeah. Furiosa, I think it was just, I was like, we don't we don't need to see them driving for five minutes. We can take seeing them drive for four minutes. Like, <laughs> like little yeah. cuts like that. No, no, I She was you. great. Yeah. And the guy that was her... Like mentor dude, some dude I've never heard of before, some Australian actor guy. He was fantastic. Is Mad Max in it? No. He's not. No. Okay. And but Chris Hemsworth Chris Hemsworth plays a Morton Joe and he's worth the price. And Furious is a different actress in this yeah. one. Yeah. Because she's younger. She's like a kid. Oh, uh, okay. It actually starts out the spoiler for that film sure. is Anya Taylor Joy, who played Furiosa doesn't appear until like an hour into the film. Okay. It's all like little kids, like because she gets kidnapped okay. at the beginning of the film. Yeah, yeah. So it's like literally 50 minutes to an hour of other people, and then she comes in, and it's like another hour, hour to Oh, nice. Okay. I, was like, but I was like, man, they had balls doing that, because she's, she's the lead. It's called Furiosa. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like no, they no. We're going to do this with little kids. I wonder if I can stream that on anything. Yeah, I'm so. gonna have to check that out. I think so. Yeah, it's that, really good. Cool, but really like. Pay yeah, attention. I liked the Mad Max so much. I was kind of like, uh, but there's he's not in it. I was like, uh, yeah. But uh, now that you said that, I'll, I'll definitely yeah. like, I'll check yeah. it out. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, okay. So your par- parents were creating their own art. Uh huh. But do you remember the first piece that kind of made you stand up and take notice? Maybe somebody else's work? Um, well, you know, I think my dad's art had a big impression on me just being around it, you know, like that was my okay. I, that was my idea of what art was kind of, you okay. know. I think I was absorbing a lot of what he was doing and he did kind of like real figurative art, so he would have like people but it would have some kind of like abstraction and stuff usually his stuff is really weird it's kind of okay. kind, kind of dark in a, in a way okay uh you know like a psychedelic way you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um yeah so that was like my idea of art um i can't i can't think of a singular piece you know that uh did they take y'all to museums a lot yeah or? yeah they did um my mom always made me clothes so i would have clothes you know like Oh, that no on. one else had like super unique yeah um she was making like wild like kind of punk rock slash hippie like blend t-shirts <laughs> like really colorful That's awesome. yeah super loud yeah. cool and uh she did well with those she would sell those um we we did uh some of the designs you know tomato head yeah uh, so in the 90s uh oh yeah my brother designed the logo for tomato head is really? the, the little tomato guy yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, so that was my brother's design. That's amazing. Uh, and do you remember Mr. K's? Yes. So that was like kind of like a competitor of McKay's, but uh, yeah. I did the little Mr. K's guy. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. like, yeah, so my mom was like kind of passing our work around too. That's awesome. When we were young. Um, I had my first art show at Tomato Head when I was like probably three or four. Oh my God, in that old location that was so small. That old, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still can't yeah. believe they have bands in there. That cracks me up thinking about the old location. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So you would walk in and just, well, me. Like, walking <laughs> through that little area like, okay, okay, I just want to hang up a poster, guys. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do uh, They both still create art? Does your mom still do screen printing? Yeah, she does. Uh, she's still not as much. I mean, my dad still paints almost every day. My mom, uh, yeah, she does. 
She's she's been screen printing a good bit lately. She kind of does it in waves. Okay. Uh, when she gets insp- but she does all kind. She's always doing something related to art. Okay. Her latest thing is like com- collecting kimonos and like Japanese prints and scrolls and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Winter. I'm looking for a book. Do you know where I'd find a book? In? No. <laughs> I think it's over there. The Japanese waves. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in D.C. when that was Hokusai, an exhibit, and I bought a book that was just about those. Yeah, it was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Japanese they make the best art. Yeah, I think. And then my samurai swords, of course. Yeah, dude, I those always are give cool. a shout out to the samurai swords. the The bottom one is, <laughs> is Primo, uh, Pigeon Forge Flea Market. Goodness, is, is that a katana? Sure. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> it came from the. I think it was the Pigeon Forge flea market. May have been Dang, that's Green a good Acres. Find. Green Acres, and uh, and then I had a roommate, and I wanted to get something to put the one on the yeah. straight the straight one, and she's and I found that one with the two friends. She's like, then get a second one. So I got a second one. Yeah, you got to Crystal Visions at East Town Mall. There's your throwback. Really? I think not Crystal Visions. No. It was a different store. It was a newer store there that had taken over, but it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I have two samurai swords. And all I think about is if anybody ever tries to rob me, I'm like, you know what? I got my hands up. I got my hands up. What the? (laughs) Yeah, exactly, man. Right there where you need it. Exactly. (laughs) Probably dull as shit. Probably. (laughs) Probably like a baseball bat. (laughs) Which one would you go for? I think the flat one. The one you didn't get at the thrift store? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I think the one that uh, it feels a little more real. The other one feels like they just chopped a piece of wood and threw something in there. <laughs> like, it in there. I nice. don't know about the curved one. Heck yeah. It's got a little bitty knife on the back side of it. I think but... the curved one's the katana. Oh, okay. I believe. But the hell, I don't know. I could be totally off. One of these on days, I'll take those down. But I'm like, now I have, now I have two nail holes up there that I don't know what to deal with. But, <laughs> okay. Uh parents screen printing does she do work for herself or does she do commercial or Um, like now okay so now she um she she mostly just works for herself my mom she was a stay at home she always stayed with me and my brother when we were young my dad would go out and work um but she would always have like commissions like um so back in the day she would do like shirts for tomato head and keep those rolling uh yeah nowadays you know she'll she'll make shirts to pr- promote one of my dad's art shows, okay. and he, she had a stroke a couple of years ago, so oh, it's a little cool. bit harder on her. Yeah, but uh, she still she still uh, keeps it going. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She she's always active, man. Um, okay. Yeah. Do they still live in Loudon, or did they move back? They up? They, they live super close to here. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. They bought a house um, off Cecil. Oh yeah, so really yeah. close to here in like 2017 before prices got all jacked up. Oh my and God, just under yeah. the wire. They, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. Just under the oh wire. yeah, yeah, yeah. They just beat it. Yeah. So that's like Fairview over here. Like yep. all this is my old stomping ground. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've always been. I grew up there, and then uh, East Knoxville, closer to East Town Mall. Cool man. When did uh, you buy this house? This will be. Holy shit, I'm hitting my anniversaries this year. 20 years. Nice. I've had this house for 20 Dope, years. Man, that's cool. I think that's right. I turned, I was 25, but then I turned 26. So I'm 45 and I'm turning 46. Awesome. So it will be, it's, there are three things. Uh, October, God damn it, I got to stop talking about myself on the <laughs> no, podcast. No, no. You're October, good. my three big anniversaries. It's the first time I walked into the print shop at Fulton becoming a designer and working in printing that was 1992 so i've been a designer for 32 years you doing graphic design mm-hmm. okay graphic design illustration and digital marketing cool man yeah. i didn't know that yeah and then uh let's see 32 years 20 years of this house and 19 years of no fast food 
Nice. Well, I'm still, you know. Dude, it doesn't <laughs> I matter. Still eat cheese and shit, but that's okay. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. I eat like an asshole. But... No, dude, that's a good stance to take, though, yeah. man. No fast food. I'm so. getting, I'm getting there too. I, 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 I told my girlfriend recently. I'm like, I'm not just for the principle of it going to eat that shit anymore. Yeah. You know. Well, back then it was a lot more unhealthy for you. They didn't have as many healthy options, and it was I would go to the store and spend a hundred dollars on groceries, and then be too tired from work. Yeah, and would just stop. Because we're on this row. Right. Right here of nothing. Oh, yeah, it's but, a food desert. Yeah, yeah. opportunity. Exactly. So, uh, so uh, you were ahead of the curve. Was it uh, Was it that movie, Super Size Me? Is that what? Yeah. No. <laughs> it was just that. It was that I, I got tired of throwing. I didn't make enough money. Anytime I threw away groceries, it was a fiscal hit. Yeah. And I was like, I got to quit doing that shit. Yeah. So I did have somebody the other day, they were talking about uh, some place. They're like, I know you don't do chain restaurants. I was like, Oh no! I'll still if I need to go to an yeah. Applebee's, I'll go to. It tastes like shit, but I'll yeah, go there. I prefer not to. But well, it was some kind of crazy food they had that it was like a, like a four thing. You know, it had like let's say chicken wings, mozzarella sticks. They had some kind of like spicy mozzarella sticks. I was like, I kind of want to try those. <laughs> they look really good. <laughs> those like franchise mozzarella sticks. Yeah, but they, but they were like uh, had some kind of spice to where they're spicy. Oh, okay, and I was like. I can't, and one of my friends was like, yeah, but you don't do that. I was like, no, it's fast food. You're I'll like, go eat the no, shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> spicy, my, spicy mozzarella sticks. Yeah, yeah, totally different. And they'll taste. I'll feel like crap the next yeah, day. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to eat anywhere if you didn't do like franchises oh, yeah. now, you know? Oh, yeah. Waffle House is my... F- oh, yeah. F- Waffle House is king, man. Amen. Waffle House is... <laughs> Amen, brother. I'm with you. I did have one buddy like, Waffle House is fast food. He's like, don't you dare. No, no, don't no, you it's not. It's, don't you dare. It's a Greg, diner. Greg, you know what you did. <laughs> Because he will listen to this. I'd be like, nope, not fast food. Okay. Uh, you're staying down in loud, and y'all were in... Oh, you said you bounced around a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so did you take like art classes in middle school and high school? Um, A little bit. Uh, okay. Obviously, Loudon, uh, art is pretty limited there. Okay. Um, it's all like sports and stuff there. Um, I think my art teachers were janitors mostly. You know, they kind of just grab yeah. whoever they could because they had to yeah maybe fill that spot um but my mom she came and she would teach art and some of our yeah. you know like just as a as like a side gig she would come mm. and teach kids how to screen print and stuff like that okay when we were in Loudon, um she was always really active doing that trying to promote art um yeah and uh basically we, the bouncing around is after i graduated from Loudon, we moved to a uh, berea are you familiar with Berea? Yeah, Berea, Kentucky. Yeah, Berea, yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. yeah, so me and my brother both got accepted to go to school there. Holy crap, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and that that was like really more when uh, I started getting into art more, yeah. you know. And for those listening, is, is Berea the one where, I don't want to say it's like a company town, but it's people work in the town? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, nice. so it's a work study. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a liberal arts work study college. Okay. I was uh-huh. like, I swear it's that, but... I've slept since then. No, no, so, no. You got yeah. it, man. No, you got okay. it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a. Uh, it's basically. A, it was designed for poorer people. Yeah. Uh, trying to get people regionally, um, in Appalachia. Yeah. Um, if your parents make under a certain amount of money, it's basically a free ride. That's uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah so. That it's not a factory job. Right. Like they're not training you to be a factory. Right. Right. No offense. Right. But, right. Yeah. I mean, the the students are what keeps the college running. Yeah. Um, they do pay you. When I was there, it was like maybe a dollar fifty an hour or something okay. like that. But you don't really need money. Right. You know? Right. Um yeah, it's a cool place. So you went there, did you was there any focus or was it more you got to try a lot of things? I was I was I was a little bit unfocused when I, I was just wanting to do music when I first went. Okay. I've always been into music as well. Um I was wanting to go to music for my my instrument was drums and okay. percussion. Um, so I had really no business doing like an actual music major. I don't okay. really, I don't really do notes that well. I don't know. Um, I see. I've seen Whiplash. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Not, pretty my tempo. Much. <laughs> Not my tempo. Not my tempo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, a music major is also like incredibly hard. It's one of the most demanding majors. Um, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I'm trying to remember what's the big school in Boston. Uh, is uh, it like the Boston Conservatory or the giant? Oh uh, man, I I don't even know. But there's one there that like there's a musician Sierra Hole. 
who's a bluegrass musician that okay. she went there and it, whoever goes there it's like yeah ridiculous yeah, yeah. And we walked by there and i was like holy shit that's where all the kids are are that are playing <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude able to play like like uh, real uh, real musicians yeah uh, well they're able to play on a banjo better than whoever the gr- lester flat or they're playing Scruggs. like bach, on a, banjo yeah, or like bach yeah. on a banjo yeah <laughs> like yeah they're playing shit like that so it's like <laughs> Oh, that's where those kids are. They're in yeah. there. Yeah, I had no business. Like, in this doing is hilarious. That. Okay. Did you still like playing bands and stuff? To uh, so me fun? and my brother, when we were in high school, we had a shitty little band. Okay. Uh, it was like a grindcore band, like super fast. Oh uh, just we we didn't even know how to play. We'd go play at Java, and they would pay us. But uh, oh my god, is this when Renee owned Java? Yeah. There's a strong chance I was there. Yeah, cool, man. <laughs> because I used to run a website here in town called Knox Bands. Okay. And it was like MySpace for... Yeah. Bu- okay. Wait, wait, wait. I think I remember that. That was me. It was that like a message? Uh, yeah. Like a for- now, that was Renee's thing, which was like Knox Shows. Yeah. Where it was more of a message for it's ours. Okay. You could create a profile. It was MySpace. You could upload music, right. put where you were playing, and then I would do interviews and cool. show reviews. So I was in Java a lot when it would be 9.59 and 9.59 seconds. Yeah. Like, you all have to leave. I'm glad you remember that, dude. That yeah. Was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I think we played, we might have played the last show there because I remember uh, the fire marshal coming out yeah. and shutting it down. Yeah. Um, I think that band Red Winter Dying was oh, yeah. playing. I remember yeah. them. It was so weird because I was like, what would I have been like? 25 to 26 and i was in the back with i may have stood next to your parents like yeah. i was always in the back with the parents because all the kids were like talking about age and yeah. stuff and they were up front yep. going nuts yeah and i was like i'm, I'm too old for this shit. yeah I'm stand in the back and just absolutely my review notes that's so awesome. there's a strong chance I was, that's hilarious. yeah that was that was fun back yeah. then yeah it's been a while since i um but yeah talk about cramped too oh my god yeah having like metal shows in a little coffee shop there was one band god love them bless their hearts they had like nine members (laughs) they once played the electric ballroom and took up the entire stage and like the keyboard player had 20 keyboards yeah and i was like y'all are metal but you don't need 20 yeah dude that was the time when everyone was straight edge and stuff they had like three guitar players and like two keyboard players just like Maxed I think that out. one had two bass players. Nice. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Y'all really need that? Okay. Okay, so you were, but you were in bands, you were playing music. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Grind maybe not me. well, but but playing <laughs> right. music nonetheless. <laughs> Trust me, I heard a lot of, some of the worst bands I've heard, I'm sure you were better than all of them. Yeah, I remember seeing on I th- one of the message boards, I guess, it might have been Renee's site, but yeah. it was, that we actually had a fan on there who was like, Best band in town, People Cheese. That was the name of our band. People Cheese. People Cheese. That's I, I don't awesome. know if that that uh, brings anything up for you. People but, Cheese. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, we we played maybe like three or four shows at Java, but they would yeah. pay us, and you know we'd go. I didn't realize she paid. Like that's. It was pretty decent for us yeah. as like high schoolers. You know, yeah. we we oh, were God. like yeah. literally not knowing how to play our instruments, and it was also weird always seeing like thirteen to fourteen year olds stand on the sidewalk, chain smoking. Cigarettes. Yeah, that was me, dude. <laughs> That was me. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great! Like these little kids, like yeah, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, what. I'll t- yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Acting like they're straight edge oh already too. It's like, well, you're straight edge because you're not old enough to not. Yeah, be. <laughs> those were the days, man. We would go to their pilot light, and then I still stand by this. This is going to sound like I'm bragging, but I'm not. No. I swear. Blue Cats. I was the one that met with the person who ran Blue Cats. I can't remember her name. And talked her into letting local bands at least open for bigger bands. Oh, no way. Because she was like, it cost me $2,000 just to turn on the lights. Wow. She was like, so we can't do a local band night that's not like a cover band. Right. Because no one will come. Right. And I was like, well, at least let them open. And so we got them to open that's for awesome, people. That's awesome, man. And started started fostering that relationship, and then it was like all of a sudden local acts actually start playing around town. That's, like, thank God, because I've talked to other really people cool. who were like '80s musicians, like Todd Steed. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, Smoking Dave and the Primo Dose. He's like, oh yeah, it was all cover bands. Mm-hmm. Like we would play maybe one or two places that we could actually play 
everywhere else. Yeah, is cover bands. That's what was so cool about having Java there, yeah. really, because like, especially for younger people, you know, Java that was like the pilot light. foundational yeah. to probably a lot of the people in the music scene now. Oh God, yeah. And there was some weird place. I wonder if y'all played. It was on Alcoa Highway, but it was if you're going towards the airport. You know how you pass UT Hospital, mm -hmm. and it's all like mountains and trees, and then it opens up. Right. And there's that weird little strip yeah. right there. There was a bar or something there that bands used to. And yeah. I just remember it was all on the same level. Like the state, there was no stage. Really? It was all just flat. Huh. So you would have these people rocking out, and I'm like, I'm like eating nachos 10 feet away from me. <laughs> this is so weird, man. This is so weird. You don't remember what it was called? No. No, I don't. It I wasn't don't. around. I, it was around. It was weird. It was around for a long time, and then all of a sudden, it was just gone. Huh. They're in Prince's. Prince's, the two locations out west. Okay. They booked a lot of local bands. Okay. See, yeah. we were still living in Loudoun at this time, but we yeah. would, like, travel down. Yeah. So, other than, like, the old city, I really was not, like, super well-versed on, like, yeah. the scene or Electric Knoxville. Ballroom every once in a while would allow for, they would do local nights, but it, there would be seven yeah. of us in See, there. I never even went to Blue Cats. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they would even let younger folks in there, but... I don't think so. Yeah, I feel like I tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my big joke on here is when the Mercury Theater was on the, on the Market Square. Okay. That I would go when I was 13 or 14. And I made a comment, and Aaron... Aaron I'm, shit, I'm naming listeners that are friends of mine. My buddy Aaron... I was talking about it. I was like, yeah, and I didn't get carded, probably because I was so big. And he was like, they didn't card anybody, dude. He texted me one day. He's like, listen to the podcast. They didn't card anybody. I was like, damn it. Let me have my thing, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so you all go up to Berea. Mm -hmm. Did you go up there your senior year to be there while your brother was going to school? Um, no, no. So I, I, I hung back in Loudoun. Okay. Uh, I had one my senior year. I was down here by, down in Loudoun by myself. I did go up there and visit a little bit, um, but uh, I was pretty much already on my, you know, basically if I didn't get accepted to school, I had to find like, in did Berea, you? I was ready to find a, another escape plan, okay. you know. Okay. Uh, luckily, I got accepted. and. What uh, was the school like? What, like, how were the teachers? And in stuff? Berea? Yeah. Oh, Berea, uh, Berea is a great school. You know, it was the first uh, integrated school in the South. Okay. Um, so it's got a lot of cool history. It's very diverse. The teachers are all, you know, it's... It's like the Harvard of the South in a way, okay. you know, it's very like writing intensive. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a great school all around. Like I'm super blessed to have gone there. I did not graduate, but, oh, okay. but I got a lot out of it. Okay. Yeah. Did your brother, like, my brother did graduate. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you so you're going there, going to art school. Did you get to try a lot of things you like, were there opportunities to try like three D, like ceramics or anything like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they have a huge endowment, so they they really have everything. But uh, I I was doing just painting and art. Okay. Really, I was kind of just sticking to the more traditional stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, but they, uh, Berea is really well known for their ceramics. Oh, okay. like, yeah, they're like well renowned for their ceramics department. Okay. Um, uh, so then you leave there. I assume get a job, just get a job and start working. <laughs> Were you still doing art on the side? Yeah, or? we we, we kind of left Berea and then we moved back down here. This was in 2010. Okay. Uh, that's around the time after I'd gotten kind of kicked out of school. I was like, well, I was just a lost like 20 year old. And yeah, I, you know, I, I started getting back into my roots of art. It was something that I'd already done for so long. Okay. Um, I started reconnecting with that. Um, I, my dad was still doing it, and okay. I just I just needed something that I could kind of tie myself to. Were you still sticking with the painting, or yeah, did yeah. you try anything else? That yeah, just drawing and painting. Okay. Uh, I've I've done you know I've dabbled with like collage, but all my work has always been pretty much like mixed media. Okay, you know, okay. so kind of whatever I need, but mostly drawing and painting. How do you find like uh, in that time? How did you find like did you? like inspiration or s something that was it mainly getting it out or did you find stuff that like um, inspired you? no yeah so around that time is when i really started learning more about art history okay you know like uh my parents had art books that i would go through 
painters like Egon Schiele, uh, Jean Michel Basquiat, people yeah. like that. You know, were really. I'm going to write down the other one, Egon. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's S C H I E L E. Okay. Uh, he's from, I think he's he's from Austria, but I think he lived in the Czech Republic. Interesting. Yeah, okay. figurative artist, really cool. Okay. Yeah. Basquiat, I do know. I yeah, actually of course, have, of course. I actually have a book in there. I was in an art museum in Chicago, and they had these little books that are really cool, one on herring and one on Basquiat, and I was going to give them to a friend of mine. I was oh, like, sweet. I got friends with kids. I need to give these books to kids kids yeah so they can learn more yeah about the, both those artists are very inspired kids, oh, kids love those artists too although i had to look through i was like okay is there anything and i opened to a page and it was like crack is whack i was like oh maybe <laughs> one or two more years let them get a year or two more so older were you at a basquiat exhibit no it was just in there it was at the museum of contemporary art in chicago okay uh they just uh, just in the gift shop. I got you. I got you. I was you. just kind of looking through. I was like, these two little books, you know, they usually have the big giant books that are uh -huh. $200. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I, I found these those. little books that were like 14 bucks or something. I was like, yeah. Well, these are really cool. Like pretty thick books. I was cool. like, these are cool like flip books where it's Good like. Good pictures and yeah, stuff. Yeah, pictures on one side and text on those. Like, this is very simple. This is really, I've got a friend who's into both of those artists a lot. Yeah. And I was like, I'll give these to her. I got enough shit over there for her. Those are two of the hottest artists still yeah. today. I just saw a Basquiat piece in Atlanta at the High Art Museum. Very nice. Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats loaned their collection and they had a Basquiat in there. No way. It looked like. I don't know how to say this. It looked like a more of a sketch or a thumbnail. Yeah. You know, it didn't look yeah. like a finished piece. Yeah. It was so. It may have not been. Yeah. I didn't. I don't remember that I looked at. I was like, oh, there it is. I just want to get a picture yeah. of it. Yeah. I've never seen one of his pieces. Uh, I think I've seen a couple. Yeah. Uh, anytime I travel, I find the museum and go. Yeah. No, that's the best way to do it, man. <sighs> it's the, the one in the main one in Chicago is one of the best. I need to get to Chicago. <sighs> That's somewhere I've never awesome. been. Yeah. Italian food. Or wait, are you a meat eater? Or are you I, 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 on and off. Right now, okay. I'm a pescatarian. Okay. Uh, that's only well, been like two or three months now. That would but, still be the Italian food in Chicago. Yeah. Legit, I came back. I was like, if I didn't walk so much, I swear oh, I'd be yeah. 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just eating the hell out of Chicago's one of those places. They have their own like cuisine, yes. you know? Like... Uh, I was actually just recently working at Red Panda downtown, oh, yeah. and so it's kind of like a Chicago bodega-themed. Yeah, yeah. like themed, uh, Chicago, well, I will tell you, to because I encourage travel, uh, I got a flight for like, round trip for like 150 bucks. Very cool. If you plan it enough in advance, and they've got direct flights. I need to do that. It was 100, now you get, the one thing I hate is you have to pay for freaking everything on top mm -hmm. of that like if you want to do anything more than a carry-on yeah i was up there for a full week oh, i, I take like, a carry-on that's yeah. all i ever take it was nuts even if i'm going overseas i yeah. just take <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's travel light uh i did not i, I, <laughs> I ended up checking a bag because i was like i don't i'm here a week i'm gonna be it was like august i was like i'm gonna be sweating a lot i need a lot of chains of clothes and a tmi I need a lot of chains of clothes. <laughs> anyway chicago's great new york I think I've been to all, I've been their, there. all their museums except for the Whitney. That's the only one. The I Met. Have. That's probably my favorite museum. Although my my spiciest take is I hate Richard Prince with the Fire of a Thousand Suns. Yeah, what's up with that guy? And that that was their main exhibit. Are at, you serious? Not the Met at the Guggenheim, and I was just walking around just angry. I've never understood what the appeal oh. of his. It seems just like money laundering to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i always say pr and marketing i'm changing it to money laundering that's even better oh my god yeah yeah it all just seems like marketing and pr crap yeah to me yeah no but money laundry i like money laundering better <laughs> okay so you're you're doing that you're doing your own stuff and kind of working around uh were you getting shows were you doing shows or anything at that point so 2010 when we moved back to knoxville me and my brother were both kind of hitting it pretty hard and making a lot of paintings um he does paintings too yeah yeah He's my brother's an artist media. as well yeah okay yeah he he was set up pretty much the same way i was and okay we, we always kind of uh fed off each other okay. you know i just mean he wasn't doing like ceramics oh no 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly painting. drawing painting okay um 
similar to mine. Uh, okay. A little bit different stylistically, but similar. Um, and we we started getting shows around here. We had we had a show, I think 2011 at Candora Marble. Oh crap! That was a big That's show. Awesome. It was really cool. At that time, it, our shows were more of parties than art shows in a way. Um, the first show yeah. I ever had was at Lock Salon, and I bought like 40 something beers nice and they were gone in the first 20 minutes i guarantee that yeah yeah and not, none of my friends had shown up yet it was just people passing through when was that locks <sighs> you know what here i'm gonna do a weird way to search for this because if you like music i assume you'll know this band and i don't want to release cool tell you the band for oh my god i need to stop talking about my damn self no 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 <laughs> Uh, there it is. So there was a band playing Barley's that was new, was an up and coming band. Okay. That have gone on to great success. Yeah. And uh, that it was the same night, and I know it was the same night because I went and watched them for a while. Sweet. Met the lead singer. Had to grab the lead singer and tell him to stop talking to my friends so I could talk to my friends. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> damn it, it's not on here. So I was looking up on set list to see there's a lot of their shows. So, no, not on St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Do you know St. Paul yeah, and the Broken yeah, Bones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they played Barley's, then they played. Wow. But I think by that point they had played Rhythm and Blooms at the. Okay. At the. So we're talking like 10 years ago. That's what I was looking at. Like. I was trying to see because they've played like they played like four shows, four or five shows before their first sh set on yeah on set list. So I think I vaguely remember the Rhythm and Blooms. Show. Yeah, yeah, Rhythm and Blooms. Yeah, they play because the first shows at Tennessee Theater is like that was like their fifth show here. That's crazy. They played Rhythm and Blooms. They played Barley's. They played. Do you remember there was like one or two? I think it was only one year. They had a music festival at IAMS. It was all day. Yes, like Metal Arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the headliner on it. Oh, I did not know that. So they, and then they played the Bijou. So that's four shows. Are they from here? No, they're from Alabama. Oh, okay. But I think it's just that connection with Dogwood Arts and Rhythm and Blooms. For sure. But it was whenever that show was. Okay. That's, yeah. that's how I remember. Yeah, because how long? Locks hadn't been around for what? Like They've not even been I around think, 20 years, have they? I, I think Bryn just hit like 15 years or okay. something yeah, like that. Yeah, so they've been around. Yeah, whenever it was. I think it was... I was I was probably still working at PetSafe. It may have been like twelve or thirteen years ago. Wow! Whenever it was, I had a photo exhibit there, Very and it cool. was. But it was the beer thing cracked me up. I was <laughs> like, "Damn it!" It's yeah. like I didn't even get a beer. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Me and my brother, we would get kegs. Holy hell! Yeah, yeah. We, I think we, had, we we got we got a keg for that uh that Candora show. I do know a lot of art friends are like. There are some Fridays where money's tight. I just hit all of the galleries and eat. Yeah. That's how I eat that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Like cheese and crackers and wine. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I used to do that on first Fridays. Just go around and find wine and cheese. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're, are there other people in Knoxville that you're connecting with when it comes to art? Um. So that's kind of part of the reason why I'm here, honestly, is okay. like I'm just trying to be more active. Okay. Uh, as far as networking, especially with other artists and stuff like that, okay. I'm I'm trying to get more into the the scene and just uh, just be present. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll sell you on something I do. I run a group called the Knoxville Society of Illustrators. Okay. We meet once a month. It's f completely free. Cool. Usually meet at Jig and Reel just because it's somewhere easy to meet I and got we can you. eat or drink or whatever yeah. the hell you yeah, want. Yeah, I like Jig. And it's, I think, the 17th of this month. It's usually on a Thursday at 6 p.m. Yeah. So I'd been trying to do it the first Thursday of every month, but and for like the last four, it's like, I'm not here on the first you're Thursday. You're a very active person, man. That's cool. I am a single dude with no kids, so I like <laughs> hey, to right get on. the hell out there. Right and, on, man. Yeah, and, uh, and do things. And do I also, it's the, uh, here I'll invoke my fucking hero kevin smith kevin and smith so hell yeah. saying this he was like i want to see that out in the world nice. and nobody else is going to do it so i'll do it great man that's the whole reason i do this damn podcast Dude, that, that's is, awesome man yeah. I, I have so much respect for that i'm 
not the smartest man in the world. Yeah. Not the best manager of my time. Well, I'm you're good at what you do. Usually tired all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we usually have, it's usually a very small crew. Like sometimes I think the most we've ever had is like tw- 10, 12 to 15. Yeah. But a lot of times there's like four or five of us. And do y'all sit around and draw? Yeah. Yeah. Sit around, draw, and talk. Talk ideas. Yeah. And Emma, who was on the podcast day, Emma Oxford, she's usually there. She and her partner live in Gatlinburg. Mm-hmm. Emma, please don't kill me. <laughs> I have a hard time remembering stuff anymore. I'm like, Because Emma, you're doing so much, man. It, Emma, where you... Here, I'm going to talk to her directly. Hey, Emma, where you live is not pertinent to me. It's Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're kind of the same, right? I love you. I don't care. <laughs> you live somewhere out there. That's all I know. Or right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but awesome. th- they come down and attend, uh, and it's just a joy. And if you get to meet Esther, Esther's a spitfire. I have met Esther. Esther's a spitfire. Yeah, Esther's she's one of the great. artists I did meet recently. Oh, okay. She did, uh, she did a little demonstration at Hummingbird, where I, I work really? now. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. super talented, and she's also someone who's very practical. Yeah, as far as the art that I can tell, and she is very aggressive on working. Yes, she believes yeah. being an artist is work. Yeah, and I need I need to I need more of that. Uh, you know, treat it like a job. Energy. You here, know, here because she won't uh, <laughs> she won't hear this. I was in a bookstore in Atlanta that I walked in, realized it was a lesbian bookstore. They had all these stickers, and I saw one. I was like, "This is Esther." I can't believe she didn't create this, and it says heterosexuality question mark in this economy question mark <laughs> i was like that sounds like something extra would say. yeah and i text her i was like i got you something but i'm not telling you what i, I want to <laughs> see the look on your face when i give you this because how the hell you didn't come up with this <laughs> it was like this is the greatest like i know man esther's the best yeah esther's- she's like a think tank for that kind of stuff yeah 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 Oh my God! And her when it comes to social media, she is a beast. Yeah, and, and honestly, I, that's stuff. that's someone who's social media, and I, I talk to her a bit, and like just to try to absorb some of that energy yeah. of like you know. Although, if you, I will warn you, if you come, her and I will probably be bitching about somebody. We that's our that's our new normal thing. I will say my my biggest complaint in town, and I will stop talking at some point. No, nah. is the siloing of all the art factions here in town. Yeah. It, we should all be working together. Absolutely, man. It's so man. silly. Abs- no, absolutely. No, none of us have to own anything. Yeah. Like just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just work and together. Like, I might not have been. I'm not. I might not be deep enough in it to have like yeah. quite seen that. But I, I, I know you. I know what you yeah. mean, though. Yeah. And I, I'm definitely trying to break down those barriers myself. Yeah. Well, I try to break down those barriers because I'm massive and I don't care. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, and and creatives need to support creatives. Yeah. You know, just yeah. just that simple you yeah. know it, it's not like uh it's not a competition no, you know no, no community over competition yeah, exactly uh do you do anything digital or is it all physical i don't i would like to though okay yeah that's something i might in the future get into you okay um, they're not to keep selling my illustrate but no, like no. emma does her all of her work digital esther does most of hers and it's fascinating because i do I barely do anything by hand because I'm not a good hand illustrator, but I draw in Illustrator, not Procreate, oh, okay, or some of the apps that they use. Okay, so, yeah, so you do all your stuff digital. Yeah, the funniest thing is I will draw intense drawings with on this no ball, no pro, no what's it called Cintiq. Okay, literally or a stylus type thing on my little mouse pad. Are you serious? I said that to Emma and she was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, how? That's yeah. how I learned. That's sadistic. <laughs> because I'm not good at hand drawing. <laughs> so I know how to do it here. Like, uh, <laughs> I did a post, do you know, a Deem, a Deem the artist, uh, uh-uh. musician. Okay. Well, they had me do their poster and I told Emma, I was like, yeah, I did that entire thing on this laptop right here. Damn. She's like, what is wrong with you? I was like, there are a lot of things wrong with me, Emma, but that's for another time. No, right? I get it, man. Okay. So you're, Right now, you're kind of working to get into the community. Do yeah. you go to First Friday a lot? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going more. You know, like okay. uh, I've been, I've been involved this year. I've been involved in most of them. I feel like, yeah. in, in some way, shape, uh, form, yeah. or another. You know. Okay. Um, whether like it's organizing something at Hummingbird or one of my own personal shows. Okay. Or like a group show. Uh, I'm just this year. I, I kind of told myself at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna really okay hit it hard this year okay kind of see where it takes me what are some of the things you've learned in being more on that end 
Are there things you've learned? Um, I've I've learned to not focus on the business aspect as much. Okay. I've noticed that for me, like, and this has happened over and over, like as I've made attempts to kind of break through, and you know, um, I always, I always end up kind of getting real analytical and getting into the business aspect yeah. because that's not my strength. And then it kind of whittles away at my, my creativity a little bit, you know? So I actually had a website I made earlier this year and I was, I wanted it to be perfect. And I, it was actually like starting to encroach on my like actual yeah. art making. And so yeah. I, I deleted that for the time being. It's going to um, say done is better than perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- <laughs> I think, I think, I think the, the less I think about what other people want or, yeah. or even like the money or, business side the better my art is you know yeah. and so i try yeah. to keep that as pure as possible until i'm actually showing it you know yeah yeah um, that's good because it's then straight out of your brain without yeah. any uh <sighs> yeah preconceived you know like like oh what will so-and-so think about this yeah. you know will this sell is this something people like you know i don't need to worry about that this is yeah the ongoing thing i have a sh- that skateboard that's sitting right there that's right there that that's an part of an oh my god listeners are going to get tired of hearing me talk about this damn thing <laughs> uh that's part of an exhibit i want to do this painting exhibit that it's just something in my head that i'm going to do because i want to do it and i don't give a shit what yes. anybody else thinks yes absolutely but it's also that's valid i'm so i've got to put a date I've said this over and over again. I swear to God. Well, this is my goal for 2025. Yeah. In 2025, I want to put a date on a calendar. Let's so it's it. like, I have to do it. Yeah. If I have a date on a calendar, Absolutely. it will get done. But if yeah. I don't, it won't get done. Hell yeah, man. Are you a skateboarder? Used to be. Okay. When I was a kid, I've tried now. I am too top heavy. I will die. Or I've tried to find a skateboard that's one of those California boards that's bigger. Oh yeah, the long board. The long board. Yeah. I was like, I need to... I. I would like to eventually get one and try again. Yeah. But it's been probably almost 30 years yeah. since I've gotten on a board. I like the idea, though, man. That's, yeah. a, that's a really cool idea. And yeah. I can see a lot of people getting into that. Well, I'll tell you off mic what my idea is. Okay, hell yeah. That is one yeah. aspect. Yeah, yeah, cool. It's, it's a different, because I don't need to talk about it. No, that. no. Okay, digital, no. But you're wanting to get into that. Uh do you think, like, when it comes to your paintings, have you, like you said, your dad's art was a little dark. Have you tried, like, I'm going to try happy paintings. I'm going to try more dark paintings. Yeah. Or are you just yeah. on, like, no. I'm on this path? So I'm I'm not, I'm a very experimental artist. Okay. You know, I'm, I feel like since I was a kid, I, I've always been, my art is always trying something, you know. It kind of feels like an experiment, you know. It's like... And sometimes the experiment ends up turning out to be like a good a good piece or something. But it, okay. it, it I, it's always been like kind of sketches and ideas. Like I'm trying to put something from my inner world. You know, it's almost like a form of therapy in a way. Okay. Um, I've never been an artist who does the same thing over and over. You know, like yeah. Even if I have a successful piece, you know, like some people they might be like, oh, this is what people like, and then maybe like do more of that. Okay. Um. I just can't. I can't do that. And I respect people that can. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, I always have to be evolving in some way or like kind of pushing my own boundaries. Um, yeah. is Subject matter wise, technique wise. Um, do you ever go back to old pieces and almost like want to, they're like, there's a good kernel of an idea there. I want to redo it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do do that. Yeah, definitely. Like I'll pull stuff from like old sketchbooks. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Um, a lot of my inspiration comes from movies, uh, yeah. books. I, it could be just, I could be reading something and I read one paragraph and I'm like, Oh, that, that could yeah be a painting or something, you know, uh, like, all right. You mentioned, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. What are three others? <laughs> Give me three. Three. I, I'm doing the letterbox. Do you know letterbox the website? Uh, no. It's a website to like log movies where you rate them and you can write a review. Oh, cool. But their social, look at their social media. Okay. It's awesome. They'll go to like uh, movie premieres and they'll go up to like Tom Cruise and be like, what are your top four? Oh, Because wow. they're, 
that's yeah. what's represented on your profile is the top four. Okay. And so they make people say what their top four films. It's always like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, that's great. a hard one on the spot. It's great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mad Max Free Road. I'm trying to think of other movies that look, I tell you a movie. I may give you homework on this. Sure. Now it is machismo over the top, but the Miami vice movie that Michael Mann did in like, Oh, nine 2012 okay it is gorgeous like it is miami vice movie yeah okay like it's colin farrell and uh jamie fox in the leads but it's it, you know it's based on a show from the 80s with don johnson that sounds cool and it's they're talking and they're like rah, 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 rah. they're mumbling. It yeah. almost doesn't matter what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way he shot it and it's all digital, it's I would insane. Im- I would imagine it has that like Miami Vice vibe with yeah. like the cool like pinks oh, and colors God. like that. So I, I, there, there are crazy shots of like a plane flying, and it's like the size of that that basketball. That's the size of it, and it's just all clouds. That, like, it's insane. Oh, nice. I'll like, have to, I'll have to so check that out. So that's the homework. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. I mean, I love movies. I stopped watching a lot of the bigger budget Hollywood movies. Yeah. I'm kind of like, when I say I'm a movie nerd, I mean, like, yeah. you're familiar with the Criterion channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's I like, a subscriber, that's so my yeah. subscription service, okay. you know, like. Right there. What is that when I can't see the glare? Oh. Perfect days. Oh, sweet. This is the Vin Vendors film from a couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, Vin Vendors is awesome. That uh did you go to the Paris, Texas screening that the Film Fest Knox put No, on? I should have. Follow Film Fest Knox on social media. I love that movie. And uh they showed it at the Regal downtown. Yeah. That's the first time I'd ever seen it on the big screen. Oh, nice, man. And my buddy That's a went, classic. My buddy went with me. I was like, I love this film. And afterwards he was like he's like the part I couldn't get over, he had never, I don't think he'd ever seen it before. He's like, she was 17 and he was like 50. Yeah. He was like, I couldn't get past it. Yeah. It was like, fair. But, well, it's uh, a gorgeous film. <laughs> you want to talk about weird? Right now, they have a, uh, a whole, you know, how they'll curate yeah. entire, like, every month. Yeah. Well, they have a Winona Ryder one right now. It's like all Winona Ryder movies. Yeah. And yeah, it's, a lot of those are kind of icky as yeah. far as that's concerned. Oh, yeah, like, what were they thinking back then? It never dawned on me that Beetlejuice, how creepy Beetlejuice exactly. was. Exactly. Every like, one of her movies are like yeah. that. Like, yeah. it's like they just used her as that. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's super odd. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is weird. Okay. Uh, that film is about. Is it Japanese, Japanese toilets, this endowment, somebody gave money to all these famous architects to do Japanese public toilets. No way. So they reached out to Vim Vendors to do a documentary on the public toilets, you know, highlight showing them because they're crazy. Cool. Looking. And then he was like, I don't want to do that, but I'll do it, make a movie around that. Yeah. So he made this movie. I was like, that's the best film, best film, second best film. First or second best film that year, whenever twenty twenty three. Okay, like it was. Oh, no, but geez. it is very meditative. And cool. Like, is it on the Criterion? It should be. Yeah, because if they release the DVD it sh- or the Blu Ray, yeah. So, sometimes they cycle. They don't have all of their movies on there. It may be on there now. Okay, because that. I would love to see that. Yeah. That sounds awesome. It was great. Yeah, I like meditative and yeah. artsy like that. The lead character doesn't talk for the first like 50 minutes. Perfect. Another one. Like, <laughs> it's like how crazy. I saw it in the theater and I was just like, this is, do, the whole time do, do. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. This is so good. You just hear popcorn crunching yeah. and stuff. It, well, oh no, he's still doing stuff. And pe- the people around him are talking at him. Cool. And he's listening to like American cassette tapes, which is really cool. Is it like a half documentary type thing where it's no. like, okay. The lead Full guy on. is in one of my favorite. So the lead guy is in one of my favorite films, the actor. And then Vim Bender's one of my favorite films is, oh my God, why am I blanking on it? It's hell. It's sitting right over there. Uh, Wings of Desire. Wings of Desire. That's yeah. That's that's his. That's probably his. Ninety. Yeah. 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 That's probably his like masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. That's Wings of one. Desire. And that lead actor was in a film from '96, a Japanese film called Shall We Dance. Okay. That got remade into a very shitty Richard Gere, J Lo, Susan Sarandon film. Wow. It was terrible. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. J Lo. But. Uh, 
he and that it was all a lot about Japanese culture and how Japanese men couldn't show emotion okay. or creativity. Yeah. So he is like hiding from his wife and his daughter that he's going to take dance lessons. Okay. But he also has a crush on the dance teacher. So there is that aspect. Yeah. But it's also funny. I'm definitely going to watch that. Yeah, uh, shall we you. dance? Yeah. Like, 96, I think. Cool, man. I'm getting all kinds of good suggestions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Homework. I'm giving you all kinds of homework. Anyway. Yeah. anyway. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned also mentioned mixed media. Mm-hmm. So you mean like photography or what, what are you um, working in? So I, I've not, I, I do photography like with my phone and stuff. I think I'm decent at it. It's not something I show my okay. work with. Um, I've done a lot of like cut up photography, you know, like cutting up old National Geographics and oh, okay. incorporating collage. But if you ever work. went out like, I need a photo of this, so I'm going to go take a photo of this. Honestly, like, yes, I have, especially okay. with like, f- like certain flowers and stuff. I, I yeah. will, I will use, uh, photo references in my work. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Um, I kind of will blend, uh, internal with external. So I, I think ideally my work kind of brings those two worlds together where okay. I use some observed drawing and then some just like kind of right out of my soul. Okay. Um, okay. And that, that's kind of how my work is, but because you have somebody, so because you have an Irish twin. Yeah. Yeah. Do you all, do you, two of you ever get together and kind of, or even your dad or mom? Yeah. Like, I don't want to say critique one another, but like share and be like, hey, I'm working on this. What do you think of this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, my my mom, I used to use like if I if I was like unsure of a piece or what I wanted to show, yeah. my mom always had that eye. Like I could okay. have a piece that is that I don't even plan on showing and she'll come in. She'd come into my room and be like, oh, you got to show that. And that'd be the one that sells, you know. But um, yeah, there's always been like discourse. uh with my family, um, not as much anymore. Now I kind of like to keep my stuff under wraps. Like I don't, I don't want that outside influence. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause like, it's like my mom could say something that I'm like, it changes my whole approach to the right. piece or whatever, you know, Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of more sure of myself now and I, and I'm just kind of doing what I like, honestly, okay. I think okay. I'm, I'm just, I've, I'm kind of just staying in my zone, but, okay. uh, I would like to collaborate more, uh, with, especially with my brother. He's he's starting to work again, yeah. and so yeah, I'm always down for like collaboration and okay. Yeah, uh, is there anything you'd like to see more of in art or creativity? Oh yeah, well, um, I would like to see more people doing art okay. the way that I was saying, like less less for the business. Yeah. And more just from the soul, you yeah. know. I, I I feel like art has been kind of castrated in a way yeah. in, uh, in today's world. There are still people doing wonderful stuff, obviously. Um, but like I said, the way it is for me, the money kind of takes away, takes some of the soul out of it, you know. Yeah, I think that a lot of that stems back from it. Keeps more and more stuff keeps getting removed from schools. Yeah, and if you had more and more where kids could learn it when they were young and their brains weren't occupied with yeah. that aspect. Yeah. That maybe. Yeah. And I think art for art's sake, you know, like, yeah. Uh, I think we should think more about what is this piece of art? What does it do rather than who did it? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 20th century, you know, art, that was really the, the century where art, turned into something completely different yeah. in good ways and bad but yeah um, yeah how many old paintings have three paintings underneath them yeah <laughs> yeah how insane yeah that is. no doubt <laughs> yeah that's not and you know abstract art became a thing which is which is cool but abstract art is also kind of um a lot of times people need a piece of paper to read what it's about you know what yeah. i mean and like that's that's cool and all like I'm not, I'm not hating on abstract art. I think it has its place, but I think for some people it's just kind of laziness, you know? Yeah. Um, it's it's PR and marketing. Yeah. That's my argument. You know, the CIA used to push abstract art. Really? Yeah. So like they would push it as like, you know, it's like, look how free we are. Yeah. Like, cause America needed its like contribution to art and high art and you know, that world. And so, 
that was our contribution at the, the 1950s was you know i'm writing that down jackson I, pollock and i will stuff look like, into that because i like have not we are is... so we're so free we don't even need subject matter you know okay um that doesn't mean it's not cool or good either it's just you know that was not that's not one i have uh, a theory i've heard before yeah like yeah 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 that. there's definitely you could definitely find stuff on it yeah yeah uh you said collaboration. Is there anybody in particular you'd like to work with? Oh man, uh, like, like locally, or Whomever. just like it can even be. Man. I hope X person commissions me to do <laughs> like whatever it is. Wow, you know, I I I just want to like, I I want my work to eventually get outside of Knoxville. You okay. know, like I I was really wanting to try to get into the scene over in Asheville, especially just because it's such an art place, you know, like I love Asheville and like super devastated by what happened recently about it's with Asheville and terrifying. Yeah. It's horrible. I uh, like, I saw a video today. Somebody posted, do you know about the like antique tobacco barn? That big, it's this massive place that used to be a tobacco barn that uh -huh. all these people had like, I don't know, like old, what would you call it? Like a, Antique store. Okay. But it was massive and everybody had their own booths and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it got so, hit so bad that I saw a video today that it is down to the ground. Oh, man. Like, not the building, but there's nothing yeah. inside. I was like, uh, there is never, like, you couldn't walk 10 feet into that place without yeah. something. Like, it just. Was that in the arts district? No, it was trying to think how to describe i want to think it was like more on like the southeast side okay like past the arts dish the river arts oh, okay like past that yeah but it it was just like dude it's how many people's lives like there was uh, another one there it was some you coffee, can't quantify it coffee shop that they had uh two po uh, two posts one was our dreams are coming true we're open in this from 18 weeks ago and then uh well we finally got the water cleaned out and we're about to start roasting beans again. <laughs> dude like, oh my god yeah there was like a bar that the dude had opened i think three or four weeks before and he had like uh, oh it's just house and done. he was like no he was like i want this to be a safe space dude. for everybody it was lgbtq friendly right. all this stuff right. and he was like i want people to feel comfortable and safe in here and all this and then it's just dude i mean i'm sure every terrible. single person living there knows someone who's yeah you know if they haven't personally oh been then, and seeing biltmore village and a lot of those places i've been to it's like yeah this is, do you know if the actual biltmore itself uh it got to the front gates but didn't make it to biltmore itself wow but you can see on the front gate somebody showed a picture or maybe it's like the 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 entry building or whatever yeah. that you can see the water level on it. Oh, I was like, that's insane. That like, is insane. It's, but even I think the one that's the most terrifying to me, I know the destruction, all that, but seeing the footage of just the interstate crumbled, right? Like half of the interstate. Gone. And it's like, when I was seeing the video of the, the river at its height, I was like, that river is usually 120 feet. It down, is and it was, like not up to the interstate, but it was way the hell up that mountain. Yeah. Like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. And like I, I hope nobody was driving on that when it happened, but it seems like there's always cars, like yeah. you know. It's uh, I wonder I wonder what the timeline's like on that too, like to get that fixed because like I go to Ash every time there's a show I want to see, I'm it's in gonna be, you know. It's gonna be years. It, and I was saying that like this is killing them because this is their prime time of the year. Totally, man. For the leaf leaf peeping whatever it's Absolutely. called you know yeah yeah like that and then all the show yeah all the shows at yeah. the orange peel Red, rabbit Red. i had a show that did saturday too. to go see chromio in the midnight oh no way at rabbit rabbit that friday and they or that saturday and they canceled it we just went Friday. and saw idols there last I, month i saw idols in nashville oh cool man because Asheville was sold out no and oh so, yeah so i went to nashville and yeah so, killer for show. some reason nashville didn't sell out like really? Every other, I was like, "How the hell is Nashville not selling out?" That is odd. It was to in me. Marathon. I was like, "That's the same size, if not smaller, than Rabbit Rabbit." That How is the hell crazy. did Rabbit Rabbit sell out? Yeah, really. I guess it's people coming from Charlotte, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they had Morgan Wallen yeah. playing or something. That show was 
Dude, they kill. That was one of the best shows I've seen this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. It was ridiculous. No, I'm with you, man. I, that ridiculous. probably is the best show I've seen this year. It was nuts. I was but, supposed to go see the OCs this month, and uh, I think at the Orange Peel. So I was headed on Thursday when it started. I was headed to Atlanta to see Curring Ben at the Fox Theater. And when I got on the road, they canceled the show. Damn. I was like, shit. And I was like, it's like three, three and a half hours to get to Atlanta. It took me over five hours. So wait, why did they cancel there? Was it flooded? It was. It took me five hours to get there. I got there, and even the roads up were still. It wasn't all the way to the center of the road, but it was bad. I had no idea. And I think it was the band also trying to get there. I think it was a mixture of like the band trying to get there. They didn't want people out driving in that shit because no. I was down to doing like twenty miles an hour at the last ten miles. And of you, that you trip. still thought that they were playing. Well, I knew, oh, okay. but I was like, I already have a hotel. Yeah. I can't cancel. I didn't pay extra for the cancel hotel. Right, right. And I had a show the next night there to see Duster. That show went on, but Friday they canceled the Chromeo Midnight Show at Rabbit Rabbit. And my friend, Adam, he was supposed to go. He and his wife were going Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think Monday to Asheville. And on Friday, he said his Airbnb person messaged him and said, do not come today. And I was like, and I was telling him, I was like, do not go because it is bad over there. And I don't want you getting stuck. I don't want you all hurting yourself. Yeah. Trying to get Good there. Thing. Screw the Airbnb. No offense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. They know. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, they didn't end up going. I was like, thank God. Yeah. It's like, don't go. Nobody can get there. That was also when all yeah, the roads dude, were Yeah, dude. That's nightmare fuel. Like, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, Asheville, I would say look in Chattanooga. Chattanooga's got a yeah. pretty good art scene. Yeah, yeah, I The should. Hunter is really nice. If you've okay. not been to The Hunter, it's really Is that a gallery? Like, yeah. proper? Okay. It's. Do you know who Wayne White is? Yeah. So, Wayne White had a Wayne Arama show that I went to, that, like, four or five years ago. Okay, I, awesome. I think I, I remember yeah. hearing about that. So, he had Wayne Arama in a storefront, and then that he took over, and then he had a show at The Hunter. Yeah, he's from Nashville. Or, uh, Chad, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Chattanooga's really good. Screw Nashville. Nashville's a mess. Yeah, I don't like, even. Yeah. I don't even really mess with Nashville. And I will say, check out like ET, around Johnson City and ETSU. They've they are starting to come up. Cool. A little bit more cool, to man. get around yeah. here. Yeah, I dig Chattanooga. That's a, that's definitely a good suggestion. Yeah, they've got a lot of good food down Chattanooga now too. Really, it's really kind of turned around. Like, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool place. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, that was anyone you'd like to work with. Okay. Did yeah. you? <laughs> uh, well, let's. I hey, Wayne Rat, Wayne Wayne White. Yeah, I'll work with him. <laughs> oh my God, he's great. Yeah, I. You know the contemporary artists. I'm not like. There's there's people I really like, but I I still like you know when people ask me my favorite artists, I still go to like Picasso and like stuff okay. like that. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man, no, I, I, not off the top, like okay. you know, like I'd like to work with anyone and everybody, really, okay. like so. Uh, do you set any goals or a checklist? I, I do. Um, I this year, you know, I started a goal that I was just gonna work as hard as I could. Okay. I wanted to develop a body of work that was cohesive, so I feel like a lot of my work in the past was kind of one thing to the next, you know, and I, I, yeah. I told myself that I was gonna at least like try to create maybe like 10 pieces that are, they don't have to be the same subject matter, just something that goes together. Okay. Whether it's just the size, the framing, the formatting, whatever. Okay. You know, um, and, and I'm, and I'm definitely going to stick with that. It's been, it's, it's worked out for me. And okay. Do you, do you know what you'd like to do in the next 10 years? Are there like big goals on your list? So I, w I would like to get to where I, I don't have to work anymore or, yeah. or not not work, but um, I would like to get to where I can make all of my money from okay. doing my own work. Okay. Um, that's that's kind of the big goal. And I feel like that, that should be everyone's goal really is yeah. to be your own boss. That's just ideal, right? Yeah. And I, I love my job. Um, I, you know, I work at Hummingbird. It's, yeah. it's super cool and like Shana's so she's so yeah tough. shout out to Shanna she's, she's awesome Shanna's so she's so tough mm -hmm. she's so mean yeah no <laughs> no <laughs> no sorry I was trying to say that straight face as hard as I could yeah she's such a hard ass yeah I mean, yeah yeah totally man 
exact opposite. Yeah, no, she's oh awesome. She's the chillest boss ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there any museum or magazine where you'd like to see your work published? Well, I'm going to I'm gonna start small and just say KMA. Yeah. Just to, like, get in there and, like, you know, this yeah. is my hometown. Yeah. And uh, we can move on from there, you know, like, okay. work our way up. Um, okay. Publishers, no. Okay. Do you have any suggestions on good ones? <sighs> no, I put that in there as a question. I'm yeah. like, hell, I don't know any magazines. Like the magazines, yeah. the two. I, here you go. The two I subscribe to are Garden and Gun and <laughs> Oxford American. Okay. Also, Garden and Gun is not what you I think. guess Juxtapose magazine. I've, I've seen it. Yeah. That, that's a decent magazine. Yeah. That's what I, I used to get a subscription to it. Garden and Gun is more like a southern lip magazine it okay is not like redneck shit it is it's, <laughs> it's like, not what it sounds like yeah like bitter southerner that kind of stuff to where it's more like like actual gardening like, like or no more like uh the south oh there's a lot of the south that's awesome oh no like totally. food in charleston Absolutely. like it's talking about that like culture cool cool like uh some barbecue joint in the middle of nowhere. I you know, see. it's more like that. It's not about it's like the design and the photography and stuff is really good. Sounds but cool. it is funny that it's called Garden and Gun. I'm yeah. Like, You're killing me with that name. Right. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay, here's here's the the big final question, which is if you could talk to the fourteen year old version of yourself, what would you tell him? Man, uh don't quit so easily. Don't uh, you know, like stick t- stick with something. Let it let it uh let it mature. Um. I th- I think old me, you know, I went through so many jobs and like went back and forth with the art so much that I never really gave and gave it a chance to to mature into something. Yeah. Um, I've gotten better at that now and. And just in this year that I've been working, you know, I've really seen a lot of like good success and I'm starting to see my art already, um, okay. start to turn into something more. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, That's good. Yeah. Pick something, uh, stick with it, ride it through. If it, if it sucks. Yeah. Keep going anyways. That almost sounds like you're like, Hey. Flick on the ear. Hey, yeah. Stick with it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Pestering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stick with it, dude. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for being on. Hey, I appreciate you, man.